oxidation, glucose and STI. So oxidation of silicon. Step 1. To begin the process of glucose, we will start with the p-test substrate. Now before we start to induce a second substrate layer on top of the substrate, we will have to get down and deposit the layer of silicon dioxide. The purpose of this silicon dioxide layer is to act as a ash stop during reactive ion etching of the silicon nitrate and to be a stress intermediate for the silicon nitrate. The purpose of this silicon nitrate is to produce a massing layer against oxidation. This is the formula generation for silicon dioxide on the beta substrate. And next, after that, you implant the mass or so called photomass, which defines the active area of finished transistors. Step 2. From the condition of step 1, we will etch both layers on top of the pre-test substrate by using plasma etching. Formerly, this etch was done chemically, such as applying boiling phosphoric acid on to etch up the nitrate layer and hydrochloric acid to etch up the oxide layer. We will only left behind two etch silicon nitrate layer on top of the pre-test substrate. Step 3 In step 3, we need to de increase the surface doping by adding an end well protection mask in order to prevent possible inversion of the silicon surface in the field during device operation. The end well fabricated previously must be protected from this P type implant. The P implant goes everywhere except the end well and device regions. This ensures that the do surface doping in the field area is sufficiently large to prevent inversion. Step 4. From the Continuation of the set 3 processes, we will have what we call a burst peak on the p type substrate. Burst peak will happen because lateral oxidation will take place due to the availability of engaged oxide under the nitric path. Burst peak is also what we call a lateral encroachment. There are two additional parameters that need to be taken care of. First is the height. With respect to the surface topography, I, in other words, this will determine how smooth the surface on top of the p type substrate. The line will determine the amount of active divide area loss. This region here is what we call the burst peak. Step 5. The nitrite and oxide locus mass is now stripped using hydrochloric acid and also boiling phosphoric acid. This acid will remove the oxide and nitrite layer on, the, on top of the pita substrate. It is necessary to use this so-called OANO process since a nitric surface is converted to oxide during locus. At the end of the locus process, this is our final product of the CMOS inverter. Shallow trench isolation. Shallow trench isolation is used to provide isolation between devices by forming trenches that are filled with silicon dioxide. Through this isolation, leakage current and any unexpected interactions between devices can be avoided. We will be covering the methods on how to produce STI. Step 1. We will start with a P-TAP substrate that has already been diffused with the annual. A thin layer of oxide will be grown on the P-substrate using chemical vapor deposition. This is done by introducing silane into a chamber that has been heated to 400 degrees Celsius. The oxide layer is to prevent deformation in later steps. Next, a layer of silicon nitride will be deposited on the layer of oxide using low pressure chemical vapor deposition. This time silane and ammonia is introduced and the silicon nitride layer is used to act as a polished top layer. Step 2 Next, a layer of negative photoresist is placed on a substrate and a mask is placed on the region in which the trench will be formed. The entire body is now exposed to UV light and all the region that, that has not been covered with the mask will become insoluble. The covered region is now washed away with solvents and the nitrate layer, silicon oxide and silicon substrate will be etched using plasma etching for precision. Step 3 the oxide layer, nitrite layer and the photoresist are all removed away leaving just an empty trench. A thin layer of oxide is grown to cover the exposed silicon in the trench just formed. Then silicon dioxide is filled into the trench and it is used to cover the entire vapor through CVD.
Later, the oxide layer will have to undergo densification process to harden by, it, by heating up the entire silicon layer at a higher temperature. Finally, chemical mechanical polishing or CMP is used to planarize the entire structure. It involves a combination of mechanical grinding and abrasive chemical mixture to the surface. This will leave just an oxide layer that is in the same level as the entire substrate. This is the final product.